Have you ever wondered if you have what it takes to be a beekeeper? Well, come check out some complete newbies and find out if you can do it too. That's the only bee pun, I promise. We've documented every step of our journey, from unboxing our bees to our weekly inspections for the first month, sharing both our successes and our learning moments. Come check it out. As we open up our package of bees, let's talk about the different ways you can start your own hive. There's no one size fits all method and what we choose might not be the best fit for you. First up, there are packages like this one. This was a three pound package, which includes roughly 10,000 bees and an unmated queen all shipped together in a box. It seems a bit daunting at first, but it's a popular way to start because it is a bit cheaper than a nuke and you learn more about how hives are established. Another popular option is a nuke, short for nucleus colony. This is essentially a small functioning hive with a mated queen who is actively laying brood and workers already established. If you're up for a real adventure, you could try catching a swarm. This is when you collect a group of migrating bees that have split from an existing overpopulated colony. The bees take on the temperament of the queen, so it makes sense to buy a docile and friendlier queen rather than a rogue wild one. We opted for a package because we wanted to start from scratch and really see the colony develop from the ground up. It felt like a great way to learn the ropes, even though it's a bit nerve wracking handling all those bees for the first time. So what do you think? If you were starting a hive, which method would you choose? Let us know in the comments. The package comes with this piece of wood stapled down to keep all the bees in. We weren't really sure the best method to get this piece of wood off, so we just used a hammer. We thought that this cable was to help get the can out, but you can see by my pause of confusion that that is not what it's for. Back to the hammer to get this thing out. This can is filled with sugar water to help sustain the bees until you get them in the hive. You can see the bees are excited to get out after taking the can off. It feels strange to shake the bees into their new home like pouring water, but it's the most effective way that we found. We can't get every last bee out, so we just set the box near the hive entrance so that the rest can find their way in. Here's the queen cage. Let's take a second and pause it so you can get a good look at it. She's got a few nurse bees in there to help take care of her. The queen cage is designed to introduce a new queen slowly to ensure that she's accepted by the hive. We removed the cork that was there and then we replaced it with a mini marshmallow, which the bees will gradually eat through, allowing the queen to safely integrate over a few days. We're not super sure of the best way to integrate the queen, but we've seen this in a few other videos we've watched. You leave one of the frames out and then you wedge the queen cage between two frames in the center. You can see the weird looking frame on the far end with two holes on the top of it. This is a two gallon syrup feeder frame. We pour a one to one sugar to water syrup in there. This is really important for a new hive, especially in early spring when there isn't a nectar flow. The sugar water will also promote comb building in a new hive. I'm trying to brush all the bees into the frame so that we can put the lid on here. We haven't quite discovered the power of smoke yet. And just like that, we've got an established colony. If we can do it, I bet you can too. We're very excited to get into the hive after the first long week of waiting. I'm using the flashlight on my phone to see if the sugar water is empty. Probably should have just moved the wood piece to see. The feeder makes all of the frames fit in very snugly, so it's a bit tough getting the first frame out. We're learning to manage our hive slowly and carefully, trying not to disturb the bees too much or harm their queen, whose appearance we're still trying to pinpoint amidst her subjects. It seems like there are less bees than what we started with, which makes sense. The queen is young and she's not producing yet, and the lifespan of bees is a brief six to eight weeks, so it is likely that we've lost some. You can see that they've started to build comb. The comb seems to already have some nectar or pollen both being stored, which is super exciting. We have no idea if they are progressing above or below average, but we're excited and proud of our little ladies all the same. 
we are doing everything pretty painfully slow here. We don't want to kill any of the bees, but we definitely don't want to kill the queen, and we have not a clue in the world what she looks like. The further out we go, the less comb that has been developed. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither is a beehive. I'm not really sure if this is proper form, but the way that I'm putting these back together is sliding them down right next to each other in hopes that it doesn't crush any bees that might be between the frames. That's pretty much it for the first week. Make sure we are producing comb, look for a queen, and look for anything weird. I mean, it's all pretty weird, but anything especially weird. Let's get into week number two. We're just checking out the cover to make sure the queen isn't on it. We wouldn't want to separate her from the hive. We also discovered the power of smoke this week. It really helps to get the bees to crawl down into the hive. Gotta get them all hyped up on our one to one sugar to water ratio. These hive tools come in handy for all kinds of things in your beehive. It looks like we're making pretty good progress in the comb. We aren't super sure what we're looking at here, but we think that the white cap parts are sugar water. Any experienced beekeepers out there want to weigh in? It looks like we finally have us some capped brood. That capped yellow comb in the center is the brood. Here I am really surprised and super excited to see larvae. I didn't really know what to expect having never seen pictures or video of larvae. The only description I've really seen is you'll know it when you see it, and we sure did. Here you can see the larvae as little C-shaped grubs down at the bottom of the comb. I believe these little tiny white dots are the start of very young larvae. Still no sign of the queen and still have no idea what to look for, but we'll try again next week. You can see we're starting to become a little more comfortable with putting everything away. We've got everything where it should be, so let's move on to week three. This week, we decided to hold the camera to try to get some close up, so be ready for some shaky hands. Check out that B roll. Sorry, I promised no more B puns, but I just couldn't help myself. Starting from the outside frame today, and we've got nothing. Move on to the second frame, and nothing again. Well, at least it looks like they're getting started on this third frame. Just a friendly reminder that I have no idea what I'm talking about, but it kind of seems like our comb production has slowed a bit in favor of nursing new and upcoming brood. Just look at all that brood. The queen bee is really putting in some work. Almost this entire frame is covered in capped brood. Under these bees, you can sort of see some bigger cells. Those are drone cells. I've seen a lot of conflicting feelings on drones in the bee community. It seems that some people want to scrape out drone cells because they are essentially worthless to the hive, but it seems to be the natural way of things, so we're just gonna let them be there. We're just so impressed about all this capped brood, we can't help but show it off. More hands make less work, so we had to put the camera down for a few minutes. Meet Rufus, the beekeeper hating rooster. He really liked to attack us only when we were in our bee gear. That's it for week number three. Let's move straight into week number four.
you can see the bright green frame at the end there. Putting that into the box was one of the unfilmed tasks we completed last week. It is a special frame that has larger sized hexagons at the bottom of the foundation specifically for drone cells. If they don't end up using it for drones, they'll use it for storage. Don't know if this is just a gimmick from the B class that we attended or if it is really useful, but we picked it up anyway. Do you have any thoughts on this? Still not a lot of comb on these outside frames, but I still think we're doing okay. We seem to have a lot more bees this week, so we're still pretty happy with that. We seem to have a pretty good mix between storage of honey and storage of pollen. We are still being awfully careful taking these frames out. They could produce a new queen using existing brood at this point, but it would definitely slow down progress of the hive. This frame has some pretty dark spots. I believe that this is where some brood has hatched out and new brood is going in, but I can't be sure. Sadly, this little guard bee gave its life in service of the hive by trying to sting my hand while working on the hive. But in really exciting news, we finally saw our queen. This was another situation of you'll know it when you see it, and sure enough, we did. She's a busy little thing. Hard to keep track of with the camera. She's got a lot to do. These queens can lay up to 2,000 brood per day. And that concludes our first month of bee ownership. We laughed. We cried. We had no idea what was happening. We seem to have a thriving hive that made it a month in with a bunch of busy bees. If you enjoyed this glimpse into beekeeping at Tech Said Life, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more updates.